Good morning, everybody. Steve Velocity here. It's Sunday morning, and I'm going to try to make the most of today before it gets really humid out. So, um, I decided instead of building my second workbench today that it would be better, time better spent if I went ahead and um, put some shelving up. That way I can have a place to store stuff and keep it out of the way. So, went ahead and cleared my automotive section there and um, it's going to give me a space for about a four foot by six foot shelf if I follow the stud lines and I wanted to show you guys a little trick here what I've got here these are hard drive magnets and you take them out of a hard drive normally you you know try to pry off the actual magnet from the bracket and then you've got some magnets that you can use for different things but I had been watching a YouTube video, uh, I think it was Homesteadonomics, and he had taken some kind of a magnet set up and was using it to find wall studs, and I had never thought about doing that before. Most of the battery operated stud finders, I just never really had a lot of luck with. So um, what I did is I had quite a few magnets, but none of them were strong enough, and then I came across these very strong server magnets out of hard drives. We've got two of them, and so what I do now is I use them, there we go, right there as a nail. And they're very powerful magnets, and if I'm looking for a couple studs or a stud line, then what I'll do is I'll take my second magnet right here, right there, and I'll find the next nail. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be very lucky with this or not. I should. But it's not fault proof. For some reason. Now what's funny is <laughs> I just found two nails right there. Now the thing is I had previously marked this years ago. I'd actually found the studs. And when I had that little makeshift retro 40s table sitting in here. Probably could have made more money selling that on eBay. But oh well. Uh, used it for something else. But anyway, you can usually get a pretty good stud line just from those two magnets right there. And uh, I never thought of it. Homesteadonomics told me about it. And now I'm just spreading the good word. So, so anyway, uh, you'll see I've got some, right now they're 27 inch 2x4s left over from the chicken run. And I'm going to cut those down. I'm thinking about an 18 inch shelf basically and I've got plenty of plywood over there and another benefit of what I did yesterday is you know most people who have shops until they develop a solution for storing their wood it becomes a problem well temporarily um, until I build something I've actually got a place for my plywood behind the bench that I built yesterday so I like that so that's what I'm going to do this morning I'm going to build me a four foot by six foot maybe three or four shelf unit out of the uh, scrap wood pallet wood different things that I've accumulated over the last three months and I will keep you posted as I make progress okay give everybody here a little progress update I went ahead and took these 48 inch um, pieces of one by two stock and leveled those out and those I think I have four three inch screws in four studs so that's going to be very solid and I'm getting to the point where I'm running out of long enough two by four stock but what I did is I took the the white two by fours the last two from the chicken run project that didn't get used and cut them down to 77 and a half inches and then these are I guess a throwback from my framing days but I guess if it works since it is just a garage shelf went ahead and put those blocks back there so that I had more to nail into for the front shelving supports right here so 
I got uh, different kinds of wood here, but you know, I'm trying to get my stock, I mean, whatever's left from the old projects and use it. And I'll make it look good by sanding it and stuff. So anyway, it'll be nice and sturdy once I attach the uh, side braces and the, uh, the plywood to it. And I would be using that when I tear that table down right there. Unfortunately, I'm not really going to use that for this. I'm saving that wood for either my workbench or some more shelving in the garage there. But this is going to look pretty good and I'll update you in some videos as soon as I get it installed in there. And I'll see you in a little bit. All right, and here we have the entire shelving frame is installed. And I went ahead and cut a practice board uh, at 18 inches just to see how much space it would give me. And uh, I didn't like it. I was like, that just isn't enough. So it gives me a lot of space, you know, as I go into the garage. It might limit me as far as my next workbench, but I thought, you know, storage space, you need to give yourself plenty. So 24 inches deep, 48 inches wide. And it's solidly in there now. Everything looks very good. It is level. All I need to do now is just cut that plywood out. And I think to uh, do something cosmetically here because of all this, all this wood in the back, I might just go ahead and cut like a 6 inch or 8 inch piece of plywood and then basically put it on the front here so I just want it to look better than it looks even though it's strong and it's gonna look good with the plywood you know shelving itself but I've got pressure treated then I've got some kind of maybe red oak I don't know my woods but I'm just guessing and then this looks like pine but I could be totally wrong so yeah uh, could have done a better job on the framing in here but like I said I'll I'll do some cosmetics and I don't know play around with it it's sturdy though and it's gonna hold a lot of weight a lot of weight I might even make that section up there a section just for some uh, lumber and then I could also at some point put a divider and make some small shelves who knows you can do anything you want with a woodworking all right, I'll go ahead and do another update as soon as I get the plywood on. Okay, I uh, wanted to show you guys a teachable moment here. I was talking yesterday about when I build benches, why I like lips on the benches. And um, I don't see a lot of people out there doing that or using the lips, but I like them because, if, especially if I'm trying to cut plywood, as you can see right here, um, I've got a 48 inch by a 41 inch piece of plywood. I've got to cut it down to 25 inches, uh, 25 and a half by 24 inches. And we'll get two good cuts out of it, of wood. Well, it's really, really hard to do. I got an army helicopter going overhead. It's probably making my voice not come through very well. Okay, if you guys can get a look at that, you'll see that what I've done is I've uh, got clamps holding my level down, and I've measured an inch and a quarter off so that my blade will cut the line while riding against my level, and I did that on both sides. But it still leaves me with a little problem over here is because I've got a pretty heavy board, and I'm going to be putting the saw, um, you know, on the right side, and it's going to tip. So I just got a regular old bar clamp, El Cheapo Deluxe, Harbor Freight model. But look what it does for me. It's holding that piece of plywood down so I can cut. So I'm sure a lot of people have figured this out. Maybe some haven't. It's really a good way for people who don't have every tool in the book, um, you know, learn something and, and make it easier for you. So. All right, well, I'll go ahead and show you uh, once I'm done putting the plywood down what she looks like. Okay, 
and uh, spent a little bit more time on this than I thought I would, but it's done. And uh, I got a lot more space that I can use right now for each of those areas. So something tells me that uh, eventually I'm going to section this thing off and maybe use some of it for woodworking. Like maybe put a partition right here in the middle, piece of plywood or something. Real simple. Right side would be for vehicles, left side woodworking. Then down here, right side would be for automotive, left side woodworking. Upper section, woodworking. <laughs> I, uh, I put three inch drywall screws right here. And here, and here. And I figured that would be a perfect spot for a lot of my spare wood. Stuff that I want to use for projects and that kind of thing. So it's very solid. It's going to hold no problem. This thing is solid. Seriously. If somebody runs into this thing, clips it with their shoulder, they're going to actually break a bone. So what I did is I put the plywood and I put the uh, two and a half inch drywall nails all along in there and in the center. So anyway, anybody can build this too. Doesn't take a lot of skill, but it certainly changes the uh, appearance of my garage. What I'm beginning to realize is I can open this thing up and uh, make it a lot, a lot easier to work in here. So, so far, this is the weekend. Next weekend is probably my last weekend. So, I think, unless I change my mind, I'm going to tackle that area right there. I'm going to get that big beast of a Frankenstein shelf and I'm going to take it out. And then I'm going to do some a little bit of restoration to this big old three quarter inch plywood up here and uh, see if I can maximize that bench space and make a much better cabinet slash shelf thing there. So we'll see what I can accomplish. Still got a lot of extra plywood left over, scrap left over. So see what I can do. So thanks a lot for viewing and uh, like if you like, subscribe if you want to. And until the next video, Steve Velocity is out.